What does this shutdown mean for charitable organizations throughout our state? Joining us now from the State House is the Executive Director for the Center for Nonprofits, Linda Zippo. We appreciate your joining us. First of all, at this point, how dramatic, how profound is the impact on the organizations that are part of your umbrella group? Um, I think the important thing to keep in mind is that the shutdown is coming on top of automatic sequestration cuts and a downturn, the economic downturn that has really taken its toll on the nonprofit community. Um, so you've got organizations that were already facing increased demand for their services with funding that hasn't been keeping pace. So the shutdown has just made a very challenging situation worse. Are there organizations in this state that will have to cease operating because of this? Um, the longer the shutdown lasts, the worse it gets. Um, we've been hearing from organizations, you know, some organizations are in a position to tap into a small amount of reserves that they might have. Uh, smaller organizations are particularly vulnerable. And, you know, you, right now, um, you know, organizations are, are able to cope, but it's getting worse. So you, you come back in a week or two or three, and the story might be very, very different. But the, uh, the situation is definitely getting worse. This uh, certainly and unfortunately, according to most observers, is not the first time that the government has had some sort of shutdown. Is this shutdown different in your experience? Um, I think they all hurt. I mean, one of the things for nonprofits, uh, nonprofits don't shut down when the government does. Nonprofits keep their doors open. They have people looking for them uh, to to provide help, and nonprofits do whatever they can to provide it. Um, what is troubling is you know, nonprofits in good faith, those that are getting government funds, are continuing to pro provide services while the uh, payments are not coming. So it's hard to keep that situation going. Um, and we're hearing that from a number of different quarters, from food service organizations to housing organizations to um, sexual abuse prevention groups from drug prevention uh, organizations. Uh, it's a wide variety of organizations that are being affected. So what goes on in those organizations? I mean, do people just show up there uh, and, you know, they say, don't worry about paying me until this, this turns around? Uh, do the phones still work? Do the lights still go on? Do the bills get paid? Um, it, again, it, it will vary by organization. Some organizations have some reserves. Some have lines of credit they are talking about tapping into, which is uh, not a situation that you want to be in. Um, some organizations may find it difficult to continue to provide services because they uh, aren't able to pay their employees or won't be able to pay their bills. Um, again, it's one of these situations where the longer this goes on, the more troubling it becomes. Who do you blame for this? Um, it, it's not a question of, of blame. It, it's a question of you know, decisions that need to be made. Um, you know, government and our society depend on nonprofit organizations to provide a wide array of services, and um, nonprofits can't do it alone. We need everybody to to help. Um, so, in terms of uh, Washington, you know, there, there are key decisions that need to be made on, on the budgetary level and, and on a whole range of other policies. And you know, we're just interested in seeing those problems resolved. We do have just on the 17th of October the deadline fast approaching for the debt ceiling, which could have uh, economic repercussions, the economists tell us, that are far exceed what we're already experiencing. What goes through your mind when you ponder that possibility? Well, certainly that's very frightening. We're, we're still trying to dig our way out of the, the last economic downturn, which is, is far from over. And one of the things that we've seen is that any economic recovery uh, takes an additional two to four years to actually reach the nonprofit community. People need to be secure in their own jobs, um, and, and those that are in a position to give to organizations need to have their own situation stabilized. Um, if this were to destabilize again because of a crisis with respect to, to the debt ceiling, um, the impact for nonprofits is going to be immediate and you know, pretty devastating. And putting how many people at risk? How many thousands? Uh, it, it's it's hard to quantify, but but thousands is is certainly a, a fair estimate. Um, I mean, right now we're already seeing the impact of um, the decisions that weren't made before. The automatic sequestration cuts were never supposed to come into to effect, and we've already had cuts to major social programs here in New Jersey because of the automatic sequestration cuts and regular budget cuts, and they're all taking their toll on the ability of organizations to serve communities. Linda Zippo, we have to leave it there. We thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me.